Upper Punch Bowl is a photographer's uh, dream. They've placed, we discovered, uh, stepping stones in Eagle Creek so that a photographer can walk out with his street shoes and not get his shoes wet. Oh, is it? And so I was able thoughtful. to walk out also <laughs> yeah. and take my pictures. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. I love the colors. It's nice and deep and rich. Those are beautiful. That's how I feel about Oregon. Mm -hmm. We, My family moved here in 1956 when I was in middle school, and I hiked, hunted, fished the Aquina River, and this was part of my youth. So uh, when I finally discovered, rediscovered, uh, Western Oregon streams, it was like coming home for me. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's interesting because so many people love the streams and the outdoors for different reasons. I mean, mm -hmm. some people kayak and some people fish mm -hmm. and, you know, some people just like to camp and you like to take pictures and paint. And I think, I think it's wonderful that, like, the same landscape can inspire so many people in so many different ways. Right, right. And, and the same, the one artist can redo different interpretations of the same mm -hmm. scene, whether it's sheep or waterfalls, mm -hmm. or barns, or cars. Yeah. You could, you could look at a photograph and probably paint it four or five different ways. Oh, yeah. Even the same photograph, sure. Mm -hmm. When I'm on location, I take uh, at least two and often three or four uh, different shots. And I, I don't just snap one picture because mm -hmm. I found that the camera is so limited. So I snap. It took uh, 15 shots to get a picture, a satisfactory picture of the last waterfall we went to on last Wednesday. Really? Yeah, 15 shots. Wow. This is up at Twin Falls, Idaho. This okay. is Shoshone Falls, just on the edge of town, mm. on the edge of Twin Falls. And also there is an actual Twin Falls a couple of miles upstream on the edge of town. So they're so lucky. That's a lot larger than it might appear compared to that plateau in the background. Mm -hmm. But it's uh, a couple of hundred feet high, and it's a couple of football fields wide. And in high water, it's really spectacular. This is one of my favorites because of the rich color. This is Drift Creek Falls, 11 miles outside of Lincoln City. And my wife and I walked mile and a half to get to it from the parking lot. Mm. And uh, now, last fall, the face of that cliff fell down into the creek. Oh. And there was a work crew not far, and they heard it. And what happened with the falls? Oh, the falls itself looks the same, mm -hmm. but the whole cliff isn't as rounded mm -hmm. and green anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the moss and the ferns will grow back, but not the rock. No. And this is a waterfall that's not here anymore, and the only one I haven't done from my own photos. This is from antique photos. Uh, I got a copy from the Yamhill Historical Society of Lafayette Falls. Oh. And this was... Uh, of historical importance, the Indians used it to cross the Yamhill River. And then later, wagons and white men on horseback used it to cross. There were no bridges mm -hmm. when it was being settled here. And so that was the crossing place. But in order to uh, help commerce up and down the Yamhill River, the locks were built. Mm -hmm. And this little waterfall, it's only a couple of feet high, yet it was significant enough that they had to remove it by blasting it out yeah. so that they could get the barges up and mm -hmm. down for commerce. And uh, a few years later, trucks took their place anyway. Yeah. But this used to be right next to the town of Yam Hill. Mm. This is North Fork Wolf Creek. This is one of the f my first three paintings of the river. And so it, it had all the challenges of water, reflections, and shadows, shadows landing where the reflections were not, and looking through the water into the rocks. This is 
this is Lower Punch Bowl Falls on oh. Eagle Creek. Okay. That's took, a nice perspective. I took my cue. I was greatly influenced by the photograph here, and it was blinding to look toward the sun's reflection. Mm -hmm. And I tried to get that. And the moss ever present. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so interesting when, to just how you're able to paint the water. That I, I guess you know you think well white, but obviously it can't just be all white. Right. So right. all the different colors and how to get it, so that the light is shot through and the movement and you know. Like. One of my early discoveries with doing the waterfalls as opposed to just the the water drifting by on a mm -hmm. quiet stream was a phenomenon. For me, it was uh, a puzzlement at first, is how th there's a color that's like iceberg lettuce green mm -hmm. and very pale that the waterfall creates. What the water hitting, hitting the water creates bubbles under the surface that aren't bubbles we can see. They're almost microscopic, and it drifts downstream and dissipates after a while. And to capture that, under the surface is a challenge. Well, yeah, like you say, with the iceberg lettuce, because it's kind of translucent, too. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, and, and how you do that. So are you, are you mostly self-taught? Mostly. I attended the museum art school when the school was still attached to the Portland Art Museum. Oh, okay. For about a year and a half. Mm -hmm. you know, when I attended, it was up on the uh, hill behind Portland uh, in the old... Catlin Gable School, mm -hmm. and they were building the new school in the museum, and it was, I think, probably a lot more fun to be up there than it was in the museum because we could paint on the walls. Oh, <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. yeah. We did, super graphics were popular at the time mm -hmm. in the late '60s. So when you were there, mm -hmm. and ha and have you been like always working as a painter since no, then? No, no, I've been. Uh, other more practical occupations. Okay. I never trusted art to support a family, and I wanted family, and so I worked at other types of work. I worked in McMinnville for seven years at Sherwin Williams. Oh. And since then, I've worked at uh, Home Depot. I helped open the Home Depot store in Sherwood mm -hmm. and uh, worked in their paint department and the tile department. I worked. Uh, transferred from there to their Clackamas store, and that was a blast because they were so busy. So you've always worked in, like, with the paint and color and right. helping people Right, some relationship and, to art. Mm -hmm. That's got to be interesting because you can tell somebody, now you know that really interesting lettuce leaf green that comes under a waterfall? <laughs> we can do that in your dining room. <laughs> True. Yeah. True. There's a crossover there. I mean, it, but it's kind of nice that you can use the, the background and training you have as an artist to, to really do something professionally that's kind of, you know, it, it works for you and it brings satisfaction to a lot of people too. Right, it's it works nice. for me and it's useful in a practical mm -hmm. way to decorate a home. Mm -hmm. So you must have, a, where are you showing your art right now? I was showing, um, I was very excited I'm probably the last Oregonian to discover the dory boats at Pacific City. And yeah, I think I even knew about those. I, I was shocked. <laughs> my, my family and I were walking onto the beach, and a boat came racing toward the beach. It's and funny it how like they go, whoom! James Bond was coming. <laughs> I know, it's great. And it just huh? came right up onto the beach, mm -hmm. and I was just like, I didn't know what to say. <laughs> That's a dory boat. And I got so excited because mm -hmm. more came onto the beach. And so we kept going again and again to Pacific City. Mm -hmm. I was so excited, taking pictures of everything. And, and then uh, so I got into a little gallery in Pacific City because it had to be there mm -hmm. and uh, sold a couple of paintings of the dory boats. And the little gallery closed, and so I got another gallery, Pacific City Gallery in Pacific City. And uh, they encouraged me to do larger oils instead of the uh, acrylic on wood technique I have mm -hmm. been doing. And uh, there they sit. And so I'm about ready to pull out of there. Now I'm a founding member of uh, 
artist co-op gallery in Lincoln City and uh, we converted it almost a year ago to a true registered with the state of Oregon co-op. Oh, okay. Just like the creamery. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're doing well. Good, okay. And I'm doing well there also, mm -hmm. selling these waterfall paintings. And you're going to be on the Art Harvest studio tour? I am. We, we've, my kids and I converted our detached garage to a studio, which mm -hmm. I've never had in my whole life. Nice. And it's like luxury, and mm -hmm. I never take it for granted having a space 20 feet by 20 feet. And I have two large easels and all the paint uh, I could ever hope for mm -hmm. in drawers. Actually, Everything in drawers. that you brought home from Sherwin-Williams? I'm just teasing uh, you. Yeah. No, it's a different kind of paint. Um, and so that is, that's where you'll be for the tour in your own right. studio. Right. Nice. We're located right in the middle of Great. Newburgh. And mm -hmm. so many people from out of town have the opportunity to stop by there and purchase their button and get a catalog. Mm -hmm. That's that's good. We should probably say that it's the first two full weekends of October. Right. So the 7th, 8th, and 9th, and then the 14th, 15th, and 16th, right? I think so. I think so. Okay, so well, that's good to know that you're one of the, or maybe one of the first stops for people coming down from Portland. Yeah, that's, that's very handy. Yeah. Okay, and what else is going on for you? Are you, are you exhibiting anywhere else besides, right now, besides the Lincoln City? No, I'm almost ready to branch out and try to find one of the surviving galleries in this economy mm -hmm. to handle the waterfall paintings. I'm always reading how-to books on the business of art, and mm -hmm. I've taken a class locally on the business of art, and the consensus is that you should have a certain number of paintings in reserve in your studio ready to bring into a gallery and now I'm finally approaching that quantity. Mm -hmm. Like like they say, if, uh, if you really uh, become popular, are you prepared for that? Pre prepared to keep up with the demand, right? Oh, I hope. Yeah, you're prepared. I hope, I hope I'm prepared. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it, it, it obviously takes some time to develop a fine art piece. Sure. Can't happen overnight. Sure. It takes, um, it varies according to uh, the complexity of the piece. I've, I discovered in this piece of Upper Punch Bowl that I enjoyed painting the rocks so much that I just kept on painting them <laughs> and then uh, glazing different colors. And, uh, and Your wife said, enough for the rocks, yeah, you, Jim. You have, you have to <laughs> Put some water to a point over where it. it's, you can call it finished. <laughs> You know, sign it, put it up on the wall, mm -hmm. turn call it, it around. <laughs> call it good. Whatever works. Yeah, ready to roll. Okay, wow. Well, I can see that there, there is a lot of detail in this painting, and there are a lot of rocks. There are. I probably couldn't even begin to count them all. I think the detail is more appropriate in the foreground mm -hmm. than the background. Well, yeah, because there's, you know, I mean, if you were looking at a scene, is you get further away, you're not going to see all those little rocks underneath the water. So right. it's nice that at some point you can just let it, let it drift off. Well, I try to paint what I see when I'm there, and and that just drips with Oregon wet and lush green and the sparkle on the water. It's just beautiful. And thank you so much for being here today. It's been a pleasure to talk to you. Thanks for having me.